so hello today we're going to discuss about gravimetric analysis and how does it work it is used to determine the concentration of unknown analyte in a solution so these are the steps in involved in gravimetric analysis so let's jump on to the principle this is a principle i'm just going to discuss of gravimetric analysis so the first step involves is the drying of the sample so here here i took the sample to be nacl for example and the reagent that i am using to make the precipitation occur is agno3 silver nitrate and the pre preparation of the solution of agno3 and nacl is the second step that is the preparation of solution so now what happens is that the NaCl reacts with AgNO3 and a displacement rea reaction occurs. So this displacement reaction, reaction causes that the silver ion that is Ag replaces the sodium that is the Na in, in NaCl and forms AgCl and AgNO3 sorry NaNO3 AgCl and NaNO3. This AgCl is stable and insoluble in the pure water. Being insoluble, it forms precipitate at the bottom of the beaker. So this precipitate is formed due to the insoluble AgCl formed. So this precipitation is the third step of gravimetric analysis. So now the precipitate has formed. I am showing it with a dot structure on the bottom. Now along with the precipitate, the solution is poured into the funnel where the red color represents the filter paper. So it is filtered and it is the fourth step, filtration. So what happens is that only the precipitate is left over the filter paper. The rest of the solution is dropped down onto the beaker and the precipitate remains above the filter paper. Now it is removed and the precipitate is dried. And drying is the fifth step. Now this dried and weighed and weighing is the last step. Now it is dried and then weighed onto a weighing machine. So the, on this weighing machine it is weighed, the precipitated that is the AgCl is weighed. So now the weighing machine shows suppose x milligram. So this x milligram of precipitate is again dried it is dried again and it is again weighed so this repeated process of drying and weighing is done so now after the drying and weighing of the precipitate that is the x milligram now what we have seen that the weight changed to y milligram or it is or it is decreased in weight it is the re reduction of weight has occurred from x to y suppose and then we again dry and again weigh it we repeat the process of drying and weighing now it has occurred to be z milligram again it has decreased in weight so this decrease in weight gradually after drying and weighing again and again is due to the reduction of h2o by losing the moisture from the precipitate so we'll do it until the precipitate attains a constant weight. So this constant weight when is achieved, suppose it to be m uh, milligram, here I written kg, it will be milligram, sorry. Now this m milligram when attained, suppose when the constant mass is attained. So now we have to get the number of moles of the precipitate that is the AgCl. So we already know the molecular mass of AgCl and we also know the weight of the AgCl that has become constant. So the constant weight at the last what we have found is divided by molecular mass and we get the moles of AgCl. From that we get the number of moles of chlorine and from that we can estimate the number of moles of NaCl. So this is how we can determine the number of moles of NaCl which determines its concentration in the sample. This is how we use gametric analysis. So if we start from the beginning we 
uh, reacted in a cl with our reagent agno3 and from precipitate and this was filtered fi and the filtrate is dried and weighed on a weighing machine it gives x a milligram then it reduced to y milligram then reduced to z milligram and this reduction of weight occurred due to the with the loss of h2o until it attained a constant weight and when it attained a constant weight suppose of m milligram m milligram then we took out the number of moles of agcl by the formula m by capital m so now we got the number of moles of agcl and from there we get the number of moles of nacl so this is how we calculate the concentration of nacl in our unknown sample this is the process of gravimetry so if we see the advantages of gravimetry there are scopes there are advantages which are these four advantages these are the advantages of gravimetric analysis so this was all about gravimetric analysis in brief and in short way thank you so this was the introduction to gravimetric analysis in my next video i'll be talking about in depth explanation of each and every processes involved in gravimetric analysis so thank you for watching give this video a like share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more pharmaceutical videos coming up bye